hello, hello, and welcome, my Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Welcome to your seven card draw. What do I need shadow read uh, for this full moon in October to new moon in November 2021? I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons Mal for short. Professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Production since 1998, author of Words of Grace from a Professional Witch, available on Kindle. Link in the description box, the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lions. But you can call me Mal. Hey, my Taurians, my bulls, my fellow Earth signs, Virgo that I am. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, settle in. Uh, we are doing a seven card draw, which means one card from seven different decks to get you clues, tips, and hints about a specific astrological timeline. And that uh, specific astrological timeline is a waning moon from the full moon uh, on Wednesday, October 20th. Well, it's full moon in Aries, sort of. It goes void, of course, at the same time. It's in a little astrological sticky wicket. Talk to your astrologer. And then we are looking at the waning moon uh, to uh, the new moon. Uh, in Scorpio, Thursday, uh, November 4th, uh, 5.15 p.m. So that is a waning moon. It's about letting go, releasing, shadow work, forgiveness, alchemy, you know, the, uh, the stuff that is necessary to bring the new in, right? You gotta, you gotta, well, as we sow, so shall we, so shall we reap. But once we reap, then we can start sowing again, if you get what I'm saying. Oh, the cycles of uh, birth, death, and rebirth, renewal and erosion over and over and over again. So, what we are going to do is see this as a general read, right? It's a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Hey, uh, definitely check your other signs. Your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising, and your Venus are going to process information differently about maybe the same situation, uh, but it's also possible they could also uh, be about different things in your life that you need to heal, let go of, release, you sort of get the idea. Like a detox, and then you can, uh, <laughs> uh, new moon to full moon, retox <laughs> with uh, some Botox. I don't know, you do you. So, um, uh, all the decks that I read are always in the bottom of the description box. Lots of linky poos down there. Uh, if you want to check stuff out, my classes, my workshops, I've been teaching more and more on my Facebook page. If you want to come to some of the Zoom events that I'm doing there, don't even need to be on Facebook to do it. I don't know how that works, but link in the description box. Find out for me. Uh, and certainly there's also a, a link down there, booking a reading with Mal, which I made to send to clients, right? It's on YouTube. Uh, I, I actually, I'm, I'm in the process of booking a big tarot party out in West Hampton right now. Uh, and that was the thing I sent her the video. She was like, oh my God, that answered all my questions. And then we had a lovely chat, right? Setting all of that up. So if you'd like to book me, go check it out. Otherwise, both feet on the floor if you can, right? Stay grounded. Focus on your breath, if you will. I will do the same to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can as a fellow Earth sign. Because the Earth signs are the sanest ones of the zodiac. So let's have at it. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm, God, all of that explanation just to get to that deep breath. One more. Because we love ourselves. Here we go. As I call upon the collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters, general assembly, the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, the spirit animals and totems, as well as the pantheon of all pantheons. For the Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. We're going to start with the Caroline Mace Archetype deck. As you know, please, what is the dominant 8th Chakra Archetype? Hovering over their head in that 8th Chakra. Giving them their lesson, right? Giving them the curriculum. Changing their electromagnetic dynamics. Uh, that Show them the shadow work. What needs to be healed. Let go of alchemized from pain to peace, shadow to light, toxic to healthy, fear to love. This full to new October, November 2021. I know it's a little humid, guys, but just leave the right cards in my hand for my beloved Taurians. And wow, you got the Don Juan archetype. Chances are this is in the title. <laughs> the Don Juan uh, archetype is, uh, you know, you'd think it would be, there are nine different families, sacred contracts, Carolyn Mace, this is her deck, brilliant. 
brilliant, life-changing work. Uh, you would think it would be the masculine family archetype, because Don Juan means Father Juan. But no, it's a wild card family archetype. Those ones that just don't fit in with all uh, the other eight. So you never know what to expect from a wild card, right? So let's look at the shadow. This is what you don't want to look at. Uh, in some way, shape, or form, this might not be you specifically, but it's a situation you could be in another person. Usually it's the person I'm reading for. Uh, this is the lead. This is the gold. This is what you're shooting for. So through the process of a waning moon, you release three atoms from lead to get to gold. That's on the periodic table. I can't believe I just gave you earth science, right? So let's say the shadow attribute. Using the power of romantic attraction... <laughs> Oh, for private agenda, yes, certainly, I've done it, right? When you're flirting your brains out to get what you want, but you have no interest in the person, mm, not great. Uh, the light attribute, spotlight, spotlights your positive, uh, seductive qualities, which I'm sure I have a few laying about the house, my <laughs> positive, seductive qualities. I mean, for instance, pick your favorite spiritual teacher or your, uh, your favorite uh, actor, Tom Hiddleston. Well, and the Cumberbatch. I have a thing for British men. I'm working on it. Uh, right? It's like they are seductive, but it's often their innocence. Right? The Dalai Lama, you don't think of him as seductive. And yet, that magnetic presence that he has. So that's why it's really not purely a masculine thing. Because feminine energy is magnetic. A masculine energy is electric. Right? Electro magnetism. You put out with your writing hand. You draw in with your non-dominant hand. So interesting. What are your uh, positive powers of uh, seductive uh, quality? You know, what are those, you know? Uh, and, and I think sometimes just being really authentic can be very seductive, particularly nowadays. So, we're going to look at the next four chakras down. The crown, the third eye, the throat, and the heart chakra, your internal world, your yin internal world, your feminine energy. Uh, let's just see what's going on there. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. As I call upon my goddesses of Earth, the sign of Taurus, powers of the North, please, one card in clarity for the Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign watching this video, receiving this reading, like a personal message, what's going on in their personal level of power, heart, throat, third eye, crown, uh, usually where the shadow work is done, right, the psychological aspect of it, the spiritual power, the mental power, the willpower, choices and decisions, and emotional power, what do they need to be aware of going on uh, in there, please? Uh, this full to new, October, November 2021. All right. Uh, the Seven of Pentacles appraisal in this deck, which I think is a pretty good word, uh, considering how many different depictions there are of different tarot cards. The Seven of Pentacles is a farmer, in this case, uh, with a deer next to her, which I think is definitely that sign of gentleness. Gentle appraisal, I think, speaks uh, volumes in this vibe I'm feeling here. Uh, she's looking at these sunflowers that she planted uh, a season earlier. They have now grown, and she's saying, do I want to keep these? Do I want to sell these? Do I want, what percentage, right? You appraise. Now, appraisal, if you have a car appraised, a house appraised, a piece of jewelry appraised, right? What's an appraisal? It's an assignment of value. But do keep in mind, when we do that only uh, by the rules of the world, which are conditional, uh, we may not see, for example, what, just as an example, what are my positive seductive qualities what are what is my power of seduction about right where am i let me appraise it where am i on the lead to gold scale because nobody's probably a hundred percent lead in the shadow except for some people uh and i doubt that nobody is in a hundred percent gold except for some people right you know that process of spiritual awakening and enlightenment and all of that because I think that people who are really genuinely heart-centered and open are just naturally seductive, but there's no hook in it because there's no bait. It's just organic, right? It's just who they are. All right. Lower three chakras. Totally about uh, what's going on in the outside world, either looking at you from the outside, looking in, right? You, you at the inside, looking out can be both of those. 
But lower three chakras are about relationships as well. Root chakra, tribal relationships, your families, your groups, your friends, your political affiliation, your racial consciousness, all that stuff. Even your zodiac signs are, are tribes. Uh, second chakra is one-on-one, -on -one, umbilical, think the navel, right? Uh, your relationship with money, sex, creativity, uh, power in that sense, as well as other people, certainly a seductive chakra. Uh, and the solar plexus, your honor code, your personal power, uh, your self-esteem, and self-esteem is a verb, not a noun. Play with that. That's so key. Please take a seat. Hmm, yeah, both feet on the floor, Mark. Here we go. <laughs> like, when I find under the table, I'm up on my toes like that. It's like, yeah, ground, Mark. Particularly as I call upon the gods of Earth, the sign of Taurus and powers of the North. Give us a mythic tarot, please. What's going on? Lower three chakras that the Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, watching this video, receiving this reading, needs to be aware of. Right? Like I said, outside looking in, inside looking out can be all of that holographically. This Don Juan archetype in appraisal. <laughs> this... Uh, full to new, this waning moon, you got the Wheel of Fortune, the Fates. Ooh, ooh, the Fates. Definitely a divine timing card, uh, saying that it's time to do this. But also, the things are moving forward in your life, but according to a divine plan, which can make appraisal a little tricky. Nothing in this world happens to us, it happens for us. Why? Because in higher dimensions, we're the one who set this fucker up. All right, we set up the game and then we came in to play it. It does make sense, right? It's like we created this magnificent dinner and then we sat down and ate it, right? It's a weird... I love a good food metaphor, I'm a quarter Sicilian, eh? Butcher galoop. So, you know, you look at uh, uh, the, the appraisal, Eight of Pentacles on the inner with the Wheel of Fortune on the outer, there's an evolution. There's a moving on here. It's not the death and rebirth card, but it is something written, something faded, F-A-T-E-D. Uh, fate is the lead part of it. It's, it's what's given you, right? The things that you can't change. Uh, but destiny, which is what the Wheel of Fortune is about, is taking whatever comes to you and alchemizing it from fate to destiny. You're doing what you came to do in this life, lead to gold. Uh, then certainly get that there is a larger plan in play for you here. Of course there is. There always is. And if anybody who says, I know exactly what's going on in the divine plan, run! Because <laughs> nobody does. Except <laughs> maybe some people. <coughs> okay, I have to, as a Virgo, I have to go with what happens in my body. Yes, I drink coffee. Yes, I put half and half in it. And yes, I do a lot of breath work. That can make me cough. I am aware. But we're also looking at heart, throat, third eye, crown here. Throat chakra is choice. It is your own free will to choose what you want to do with the wheel of fortune. It's going to turn with or without your permission, right? So what are you going to choose? Look at your... All right, I hear that. Look at not just your... Uh, seductive power, but what seduces you? Oh, that's a really hot question. Thank you, whoever that was. What seduces you? Whoever asks that question? Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> I'm no cheap date, uh, but uh, sushi and sake is usually a good way to at least, uh, you know, drop the defense shields. I love going out on dates, but I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to kiss somebody brand new with a piece of cloth on your face. But you get what I'm saying, right? The wheels are turning. There is an evolution. There is a moving on here. There is a larger plan. Can you alchemize fate into destiny? Yes, you can. <laughs> Let's see. By asking the Ascended Masters from the Matt Con Healing Mantra deck. I think I'm going to read it from the bookie book. The last two decks I'm reading bookie books, but I think this, I didn't do it for Aries, but I think I want to read them. Uh, I just, uh, before I did this video, I was watching a Matt Con video. It's the Matt Con Healing Mantra deck. Your inner healer or something like that. He's on YouTube. His YouTube channel is awesome. Please take my seat, bro. I decided to take it slow and steady today and get these readings done and maybe do a little shopping around the corner later, you know, play with the cats, watch a movie. I'm doing this on a Saturday, you know. So breathe. 
Well, that's the beauty about YouTube. You can always pause it and come back later as I call upon the Ascended Masters. Uh, I don't know. This could be romantic, but, you know, a good car salesman has the Don Juan uh, archetype. Uh, but there definitely is some divine uh, scripting going on here. So please, my Ascended Masters, let's just say General Assembly. What is the perfect healing mantra? There we go. For the Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. I'm getting really strong with that appraisal thing. They're like, darling, I, I have to let myself know. Do I stay or do I go? Is this worth it? Do I want to do this? Do I want to burn this to the ground? And it is time for that to happen. So please, what is their perfect healing mantra uh, this full to new October, November? Transforming tragedy. Had a feeling. Something similar, at least. Loss is my reminder that more room has been made for greater gifts to be received. As I was saying, the never-ending cycles of uh, erosion and renewal. New moon to full moon, full moon to new moon around and around and around we go. So I'm, these aren't really long. Uh, the Blessed Bee, the last one down, is the longest, but it's gorgeous. And you know what? My readings are too long, I understand, but now I'm seeing readings putting out on YouTube being put out on those little shorts. I'm like, wow, it's not my style. I've been reading cards since I'm 12 years old. I'm 53. Yes, I know I don't look a thing, so I'm giving you my best, but I'm fun. And I look good, at least, right? Transforming tragedy loss is my reminder. Like a little string around your finger, right? Loss is my reminder that more room has been made for greater gifts to be received, right? It is what we're looking at here. This is a waning moon. Read. This is about it. Right. I'm going to let go of that. I'm going to let go of that. Sometimes it's not a question of letting go. It's already gone. You just got to let it. Right? It's already on, on the out, uh, the ebb tide. When tragedy is transformed, you see that endings foreshadow the inevitable arrival of exciting new beginnings, just like winter turns to spring, right? Uh, it may not feel good to lose the things that once defined you. We'll stick a pin in that. We'll come back to that. Uh, but it is life's way of expanding your identity to event more passion, joy, and synchronicity into your reality. I mean, I, we identify with things that are not really who we are, right? Uh, people, places, and things in our lives, those are external. The core of who you are is eternal spirit. This ain't your first life. It ain't your last. And this ain't the only planet worth incarnating on. There's a lot of them, apparently little tinfoil hat woo-woo land for New York witch, but uh, some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, as you transform tragedy, any degree of loss merely sets the stage for the arrival of greater gains. And I think for a waning moon read, we're talking alchemy shadow work. This is about transformation. Alchemy is a process of transformation. Uh, this mantra is ideal for overcoming personal struggles. Who ain't got them? Except some people. Uh, mourning the death of a loved one and releasing regret. Well, that morning death of a loved one with a, uh, a Don Juan, that could be the releasing of something romantic sexual, only you know that in a general read. Uh, and releasing regret, only the ego regrets. The soul sees everything as a learning opportunity, a growth opportunity, and that is the difference between shadow and light. Fear and love, and I could even say ego and the soul. But the ego is not separate from the soul. It is uh, the, the most dormant aspect of it. Right, so it is unraveling and it is not a pretty process. Uh, so let's talk to your higher selves here. Or the party turned her deck, as I love calling it, the Whispers of Love Oracle. Feet on the floor, Mark. Please take a nice deep breath. You think I'm hard on myself? You should hear my guides. They're lovely. They're like, you don't have to do this if you don't want. I'm like, I know. <laughs> but I'm a Virgo and I have a schedule. <sighs> Breathe. call upon the higher selves of all involved. Uh, fifth dimension above eighth chakra and above what is the whisper of love for the Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, alchemizing the Don Juan with appraisal, Wheel of Fortune, and transforming tragedy. What do you got for them? This full to new to help them with this higher selves. Speak the language of love. Beautiful card, by the way. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't work with decks that don't, um, that don't artistically inspire me. Uh, speak the language of love. Loving words have the power 
uh, to change someone's life, including your own. And how about that thing of just like self-speak, right? Even if it doesn't come out your mouth, right? What are you saying to yourself in all of this? What are your words to yourself? Because why in the world should we offer other people loving words if we haven't offered them to ourselves first? That leads to martyrdom and bitterness and and uh, sometimes what's called emotional bypassing. No, oh, no, everything's great. It's not the same. Speak the language of love is also about talking to your emotions, talking to your body. Look, you're not your body, you're not your emotions, you're not your thoughts, you're not your desires. All those things change. Transforming tragedy, right? Loss and gain. Loss and gain. Uh, the truth of who you are is immortal and eternal and divine and <laughs> perfect. So, you know, to, to talk to, be the spirit, fire, earth, air, water, spirit, the pentacle. You're the spirit. You are the E that comes in to experience the MC squared. Did I just give you Albert Einstein? <laughs> wow, theory of relativity. <laughs> Figures of Virgo. So speak the language of love. Uh, there's huge power for you to change here. So, you know, I, that question, what, what am I seduced by? Like, you know, people, places, and things, sure, but what is it? It's about how it feels, I betcha. Hmm. Let's do the Divine Animals Oracle by Stacy DeMarco here. There's a lot in this little bookie book. I'm just going to read you the, the, the thumbnail sketch that they give you and uh, the magic of the animal. Let's talk to the totems and the spirit animals. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. Such a different vibe. As I call upon the totems and spirit animals for the Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, watching this video, receiving this reading, who walks with them, who flies with them, who crawls with them, who swims with them? What are, what's the, the Divine Animal Oracle message for the Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, watching this video, receiving this a reading alchemizing the Don Juan with appraisal wheel of fortune transforming tragedy and speaking the uh, language of love this waning moon from full to new that's the one uh, October November 2021 oh butterfly my garden outside has been caterpillar haven I mean I've still got them outside big black monarchs gorgeous. So I grow things out there just for them. <laughs> like, what, do I, what do they love? My fennel. I got bronze fennel this year. I'm such a gardener. Uh, my flat leaf Italian parsley. I don't even use anymore. It's like, eat up, guys. Hey, munch. <laughs> so a uh, beautiful, gorgeous card here, the butterfly. And I bet it's about transformation, right? Usually is. Uh, the soul. I don't think we've read this one yet. It's a lot in here. Uh, the soul. Butterfly, yes, because it's the word psyche, which means soul in Greek, is also butterfly. Mm, what number is this? Card number 28. Welcome to Microfont. <laughs> Sounds like a computer center. Uh, itty bitty teeny nano font going on here, but it's a lot of good stuff in here. Really, really great oracle. Please take a nice deep breath. Card number 28, the butterfly, the soul. To experience our full selves, we often go through a difficult period of transformation. I don't know, like transforming tragedy, maybe? Uh, uh, I did say it was about transformation. Uh, we'll go through a difficult period of transformation and growth. Trust what you feel. We all have stages to pass through in life, and uh, not all are easy. <laughs> And they ain't whistling Dixie. Uh, look ahead uh, to where you wish to be, not where you have been. Be in the present moment, look forward, right? Because a caterpillar can't go back to an egg. <laughs> you know, it's just there's only one direction on that one. Uh, Self trust. Uh, and the trust of your partner are necessary for a positive relationship. Well, that's an odd thing to throw in there at the very end. Self-trust and the trust of your partner are necessary for a positive relationship. I think this now with this, I mean, I was kind of backing off from it, but this now might very well be a soul contract read uh, with issues of trust here. Um, 
Uh, but a transformational thing. Remember, it's not happening f to you. It's happening for you. Uh, not the easiest thing to accept, but we often see it in hindsight. And even if we've seen it in hindsight, we see where we are now. Well, this can't possibly happen for me. And then years go by and you go back. Oh, right. But it's only the butterfly that sees that. Oh, it's so deep. Uh, let's do the magic here. Uh, butterfly magic is the key to growth and transformation of the soul. Going through trauma or difficulty helps reveal our true self and grow into the full magnificence of the soul itself. Well, I would say it's a process of evolution, right? You grow into it. Egg, caterpillar, uh, cocoon, butterfly, the ego, uh, the, the, the personality, the soul, and the higher self. I'm actually doing a talk on Facebook called Human Hero Immortal God, just a lecture, a one-shot. I'll do it over and over, maybe about that, how it's all one thing. They're all one and the same, but they're not all the same thing. Uh, uh, when you need help moving from one life stage to another, then butterfly magic can be useful, although patience is often needed to embody change fully. Uh, you know what goes on in the cocoon? The caterpillar liquefies, eats, I think, its own liver or something, and then turns into a butterfly. That do take time. Uh, uh, when you require a dose of beauty, hope, and lightness of spirit, and a reminder to live your life to full, then butterfly energy can be just the thing. Call upon the butterfly. I love them. I just absolutely love them. And Psyche, the soul, which is also the wife of the uh, Greek god of uh, love and sex, Eros. Mm. So we get the word erotic from. Okay, last card down. Uh, and what are these cards? What are these cards? You know what I'm going to say if you've been watching me for a while. Uh, let's see. The Mystical Blessing Cards to Enrich and Empowered Blessed Be by Lucy Cavendish. She's so talented. Good writer. Oh, she's so good. These prayers and these blessings are just something else. And that's why we're going to do them for realsies. Uh, the Waning Moon Reads, the Shadow Reads. I try and keep a little bit of humor in there, right? A spoonful of um, organic raw honey <laughs> to make the shadow work go down. Please take a nice deep breath. As I call upon the pantheons of pantheons, all lineages, all cultures, all traditions, even that starseed stuff, please. One card in clarity for the Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. As was said, you know, in this transformative process, there is a blessing in all of this, but it's hard to see from the point of view of the egg, the caterpillar, or the cocoon. It is the butterfly who really gets to fly high and see that larger picture. So please, what is... Uh, the hidden blessing here from the Blessed Bee Oracle for the Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign watching this video, receiving this reading, alchemizing the Don Juan to spotlight uh, their positive, seductive abilities with appraisal, wheel of fortune, written, scripted, fate into destiny, their free will, how they want to do that, transforming tragedy loss as their reminder that more room has been made for new gifts to be received, speaking the language of love, which feels very like live, leverage here. Like that's something that only they can do for themselves here. And in that appraisal, to do that appraisal in a loving uh, way verbally, I think is important. While the butterfly and the soul flies with them, right? That there's an evolution, a soul evolution going on here and very much a possibility of another person being involved here uh, as a soul contract. So what is the perfect blessing, the hidden blessing that has been here all along, Pantheons of the Divine for the Tauruses, this uh, full to new uh, October, November 2021. Oh, a blessing on the senses, S-E-N-S-E-S, -E -E the gift the world, that gift the world to you. Oh, a blessing on the senses that gift the world to you, right? Like the ability to hear, gives you the gift of music and the ability to see art and flavor. I make a chicken cutlet parmesan lasagna that would just make you want to marry me. Yeah, no, my mom taught me how to cook. Well, I'm the gay son in the family. No, my, interesting, my older brother is actually a really, really good cook. It's just, you know, I, I like presentation. Uh, card number seven, blessing the senses that gift the world to you. 
a blessing to assist you in making the most of all your senses and in appreciating them and thus enhancing their beauty within your life. This is about the external world. This can very much be about clarifying a blessing on you, really seeing where you are with the Wheel of Fortune here to make the most wise, loving, empowered decisions you can. Here comes the actual blessing. Please take a nice deep breath. Do this through me, pantheons of the divine. May you be blessed with a keen, sensual appreciation of the natural world and all that it has gifted you through the senses you have been so very blessed to receive. May your two eyes see far and take in the beauty of the world. May they open upon days of joy and close on deeds well done. May the color and the shapes of the world be visions of delight to you. And may you find beauty in the pa in the pavement and in the... What is that? Yeah, no, that is pavement. And may you find beauty in the pavement and in uh, the tar. Is that really what that says? Yeah, in the pavement and in the tar. To see the beauty in the pavement and the tars are not just nature, that stuff too. Uh, in the same, uh, I gotta do this, in the stone forests of the cities, uh, may you be given mountains to gaze upon, seas of blue and azure to be reflected within your eyes, green fields and wildflowers to delight you with all the beauty that there is. May you find this beauty within your own form and gaze upon yourself with satisfaction and knowledge that the universe has created a unique moment of wonder within you. I think that's directly connected to the Seven of Pentacles there with that appraisal. Um, may your lips taste wild honey, your tongue find pleasure in the food on your table, and may the meals of your life be sensual delights, enriching the marvel that is your body, fueling you to greater good health. This is very Taurus. This is about living a sensual life, right? Engaging all the senses, including the sixth one. May the texture and delights and sensations of taste be taken slowly, uh, without greed or hurry. And when you are satisfied, let you give thanks to the natural world for its offerings to you, the earth's child. May your skin sense the world about you and within you, touching those with comfort, nurturing, soothing, and the healing of the human touch will be yours. Let all those who uh, you touch return that gift, and may the exquisite sensitivity of the body transport you, yet never devour you. May your ears be blessed with the sounds of all the wild world, the whisper of trees speaking with each other, and the bird song at each change of the season, the sound of speech that is beautiful, truthful, and pleasing, speaking the language of love, the rich silence of nature that allows you to know yourself so deeply. Blessed be. Just let me put it together for you. Please take a nice deep breath. This makes sense. This is very Taurus. As I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine, please bless the Taurus collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, watching this video, receiving this reading personally for me on my behalf, bless them, that they can really alchemize that Don Juan archetype to appreciate their own seductive magnetic uh, qualities to draw to them things, and they are in that process of appraisal, really assigning value, but understanding that things are changing, things are turning, it's a cyclic change, it's time, there's something written into this scenario that they're in that may very well involve seductor and seductee here in some way, shape, or form, but that they are transforming tragedy. There's probably a loss here because loss is the reminder that more room has been made for greater gifts to be received. And why wouldn't that happen during a waning moon? But to speak the language of love is so key for the Taurians watching this because it's their self-speak and not even what comes out of their mouth, but to talk to their bodies, to talk to their hearts, to talk to their thoughts, to talk 
uh, to all of that because there is an evolution here of the soul, the butterfly, as a result of the transformation that they're going through. Not that they have to like it. They could say, this sucks all the way through it. I'm sure the caterpillar does not enjoy liquefying and then eating its liver or whatever, right? It is an alchemical process, takes heat, time, and pressure, alchemy, and transformation is not easy, but there's no going back. You can't unburn a cake. You can't unburn a cookie. So that they can, as they do this, and once they're through this, really see the hidden blessing on the senses that gift the world to them, that everything is happening for them, not to them, but while they're going through it, they don't have to like it. They don't have to enjoy it. Better they be authentic and speak those loving words, the language of love to themselves so that they heal, grow, become the best that they can be. And as they heal through unity, consciousness, help us all heal in a time when the world needs it more than ever. So may they speak that language of love, uh, the language of the soul with great appraisal because it's time, because they're going to see the world very, very differently here. And chances are their magnetic attraction of seduction in a positive way will be unfolding for them in ways that will be honorable and truthful. And man, if we had more on that planet, this place would be heaven on earth for the well-being of all and with harm to none. As I will it, so let it be done. So more to be. And so it is. There it is. Shadow raids are supposed to be tricky. <laughs> Oh, you have impacted joy you need to embrace, said no one ever. Right? Well, maybe you do if you weren't allowed to have fun. <laughs> Just had something from my Sicilian great-grandmother pop into my head. I won't say it on camera because I can't. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please do like it. Hit that like button. It helps other Taurians see it. You want more of me? Subscribe if you haven't already. You want to take some of my classes? You go right ahead. All of it's in the description box, including booking a reading with Mal. Uh, be glad. Uh, to serve fellow earth signs or really any all out there. So wishing you the very best and the very blessed of this full to new October, November, my beloved Taurians. Hail, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.